Behind their perfect blocking, Ernie Green skirted right end for the score that put it out of reach. Nelson's choice for the play was appropriate, since the valuable Green's role has been limited this year due to a severe knee injury. Dallas scored a meaningless touchdown in the waning seconds of the game to bring the final score to 31-20. The Cleveland Browns had won the Eastern Division title, and in doing so had decisively beaten a team experts had chosen as successor to Green Bay's Packers. They proved that an earlier win over the Baltimore Colts was no accident. That victory came after a faltering start and was the catalyst for a string of eight straight impressive victories, a streak that can be nothing less than a testimonial to their coach, Blanton Collier. He replaced one of the proven quarterbacks in the NFL with one who had never played with a winner, and he overcame a succession of injuries to key performers. And here is the touchdown, the one that gave Cleveland a 7 nothing lead, a block by Kelly in front, and Bo Scott gets in. He's their new fullback. He replaced Ron Johnson. Nelson again in action. He fakes the end sweep to Kelly, a maneuver that he used throughout the day. He finds Morin again. It seems that Morin always has big days against Dallas. Nelson, spectacular throughout the day. This time to Warfield at the 1. Cleveland was penalized five yards because of backfield in motion after this, so now they're back at the 6. They put this play in the day before the game. Nelson to his tight end Morin, 89. Cleveland got the ball in the closing seconds of the first half after Dallas had to give it up. Nelson fired strike again, this time to Warfield in the middle. Cleveland throws to a wide variety of receivers, as you'll see. Morin clears the area. Nelson throws down the middle to Bo Scott. Scott fumbles, and it's recovered by their offensive center, Fred Hoagland. They got a field goal just after that from Don Cockroft, and at halftime, it was 17-0. The Cleveland Browns over Dallas, and Dallas fans hoped, hoped, that something could take place at halftime that might get their team back on the right track. Such was not to be the case. In the early moments of the third quarter, Craig Morton, who had a tough day for Dallas, back to pass, must be excellent coverage. Fine rush by Cleveland, and... Houston intercepts and rambles down the sideline some 33 yards before they can get him down. Nelson went right back to work. He lost none of his sharpness at halftime. Screen pass to Kelly. Behind excellent blocking down in front. Kelly almost got in. Now from the end zone, the second touchdown of the day by Cleveland fullback Bo Scott. That's Bob Lilly coming across in front of him. And that should give you some indication of the strength that Scott possesses. Nelson on a draw to Leroy Kelly. A fine block in front by Gary Collins, number 86, as you can see on Cornell Green. That's uh, just at the end of the third quarter. Beginning fourth quarter, Kelly gets his touchdown. That made it Cleveland 31. Dallas 7 at that point. This is the place we told you that they like to work on Cleveland. Walt Sumner intercepts. 88 yards later, Cleveland has its 37th and 38th point as Don Cockroft's extra point was good. And that's the way it was at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Pretty much a one-sided affair. 38 to 14, the final score. Now here's the snap, the hole, and the kick is up. It is good, and the game is tied. The Browns have come back from an <laughs> Ernie the Kid looked bad for a moment, but when the pressure was on, he came back and got the 10 points he needed. This place is absolutely bedlam. The stadium has gone berserk. Hey, we've been here before. You remember? Shit. We've been here before, not once, but twice. Now, third time's a charm for us. Yeah, One play at a time. Here we go, here we go. One play at a time, the Browns work their way toward the New York goal line. A chip shot field goal from 23 yards out would put a fast end to this fairy tale finish. But the same man, Mark Mosley, who kicked the Browns into overtime, couldn't kick them out of it. But that one missed kick never weakened the Browns' resolve.
by stuffing the New Yorkers on three straight possessions. Cleveland's defense dominated overtime. Going into a second overtime period, the operative word was still patience. 60 yards and 11 plays, and the Browns' clutch performance allowed Mark Mosley the opportunity to redeem himself. Here we go. 37-yard attempt. The kick is up. It is good. The Browns have won the game. The Browns have won the game in double overtime, and the stadium has gone for sir. Cold history will never be able to transmit the range of emotions felt by one team thinking it had lost only to win, and another thinking it had won it all, only to lose. A young quarterback today threw for 489 yards to bring his team back in the final three minutes of regulation play. The stadium is pandemonium here. Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Cleveland's dog defense served up the final treat. The 1987 Browns were now only one win away from the Super Bowl. It is intercepted at the one. It's official. Bledsoe would seal the Patriots' fate, and not in a good way, when he was picked by the late, great Eric Turner. After winning the wildcard matchup, the Browns would fall in Pittsburgh the next week.